Hey everybody, this is Ruben from Pop Goulash. I uh, just wanted to reach out to everybody and say, hey, you can follow us on social media on Facebook at facebook.com slash pop goulash. You can also follow us on Twitter at pop goulash. Uh, if you want to participate with the show, please feel free to email us at popgoulash42 at gmail.com. And we also have a voicemail number where if you want to leave us a voicemail, let us know how we're doing or have any suggestions for us. You can reach us at 224-325-4235. And we will see you soon. Thank you very much. And let's get this show on the road. I don't know how sexy I can be tonight in people's ear holes. <laughs> nah, I don't know if I can either. I got that, th- I, dude. I got that fucking throat thing going on again. Ugh. Just whatever you, bueno. f- whatever you guys do, <laughs> have children, but have somebody else raise them. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, I love my kids, but I've never like just wandered that borderline of illness in my oh. entire life. Just, just barely like. It's it's like 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 it's like being on a tightrope, and like <laughs> no matter what, you're gonna fall the fuck off, and you're gonna get sick because you know children are are fucking petri, petri dishes, dishes <laughs> of just disease and snot. Oh, dude. Okay, so get this. This morning, <laughs> I'm getting the boy up. I'm like, all right, Grayson, come on, time to go to school. No, I don't want to go to school. I'm like. <gasps> Dude, and this, uh-huh. this dude, this is a constant at this point. And I'm like, buddy, it's you got to go. Oh my god. I'm like, oh, buddy, you know, you got you got boogers on your nose. Hold on, let me get this. I had a big booger. What'd you do with it? I put it in my mouth. <laughs> I'm like, you <laughs> ate a booger? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm like, at what? least he's honest about it. I'm like, buddy, that's <laughs> gross. Why? Why, Daddy? Why? Because C- it's mucus, buddy, and it's dirt and all kinds of stuff. You well, don't want to eat mucus, that. mucus, Daddy? Why? I, I don't even know why. It's just <laughs> gross. Just don't eat boogers, man. For the love of Christ. Eat stickers instead. Dude, I don't. I don't know. Dude, don't paste. Do I, yeah. At least paste is made from hooves and shit. There <laughs> might be some nutritional content in it. <laughs> Get him his calories for the day by eating Elmer's glue. Yeah, well, you know, we all did it. <laughs> you know, actually, I never did. Really? See, I, I never did. did. Were you were you in school in the era of paste? Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. I'm only a year younger than you. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I always feel like everybody is like five years younger than me because I feel so fucking old most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> I do, man. I don't know why. I feel like I'm just older than everybody because usually I am. Well, I know, I know. Like, unless I'm like around Eli... Me. Well, you, but I mean, to to a lesser extent. Right. But like, you know, I, I always feel like I'm just like the oldest fucker in the room. <laughs> and not, not like by a lot, you know, but I just, sometimes I just feel my age. And I'm barely fucking 40, man. Dude, I'm feeling that way lately, too. Oh, you know, so I have to tell you, I did not eat paste as a kid, but you know what I did fucking eat? Do you remember those books with like the punch out stickers that had like the almost like the stamp glue on the back of them no you don't remember that shit no my sister and i used to eat those too like we'd lick them <laughs> but then we'd let them sit on our tongue for too long and then we fucking chew them you that were just swallow. practicing doing acid for when you were a th- high schooler never did acid. really I never did acid. oh i did lots of other drugs i never did acid see i'm, I'm kind of that way i i did a little uh i had a little fun with some lsd yeah. I remember one. T- so I think I think I need to make a reoccurring segment on the show of like embarrassing Ruben stories because God, I got a ton of them, man, and they're always fun to tell because they're humiliating. Lord knows I have a ton as well. For my- not about you, about myself. Well, well, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> like, oh God, I was thinking of one the other day. Okay, when I was uh, when I was like five, listening to the radio in my mom's car. Oh. Like, I used to think that the band would come in and play the song on the radio, and they'd have to hurry up and get the next band in. That's so cute. And I also thought every band was from Chicago. (laughs) 
Because how did we know? Yeah, we had no. We had context. no concept of the world around yeah. us. Like, no oh yeah, they're from they're from Chicago. <laughs> yeah, Who, where's Chicago from? Detroit. I don't know why they're just from Detroit. <laughs> I don't even know what Detroit is. I was five. I don't give a shit. Man, my mom still has the radio that uh, we used to listen to when I was a kid. And I remember, like, dressing up in her, like, clothes. And, like, I, one of the songs that I totally remember jamming out to was Katrina and the Waves, Walking on Sunshine. And so, yeah, I know. That's kind of fucked up. Um, but <laughs> I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> Whoa. Every time spinning. I hear yeah. every time I hear that song, I think of Jack Black in... <laughs> Oh, in, God, high in high fidelity, like spinning around the store until he falls down. down. Yep. One of my Turn that shit off, Barry. <laughs> Dude, I just wanted something we could talk about. I just want something I could ignore. It is so sad every time. Ta- I don't, dude, we're all over the fucking place tonight. I don't really care. Nah. My my brain is fried. I started taking my human anatomy course <clears throat> a week ago yesterday. And a lot of uh, caffeine pills. Uh, no, I. you know, I wish I could say that, but no. You, dude, no you've caffeine. lost a ton of weight, dude. Thank you. How is the meth working for you? The meth is great. <laughs> We've got the lab in the basement. You will see it again on Friday. Um, no, I really don't have a meth lab at home. Don't fucking report me, people. Um well, Thank well, you, it, I thought it was weird that producer Jake kept wanting me to call him Mr. White the whole time we were at the. I was at the house the last time. Well, don't you remember that Halloween where he dressed up and posted? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was very good. Yeah, but no, I, I am sleep deprived. I go to sleep at night, fucking going over the skull structures and <laughs> reciting the, like the the bones and like the different pieces of the bones in my head. And the different layers of the skin and the different um, structures that make up, uh, like, the skin. So, for example, I mean, you saw, like, my dog. Your epidermis is showing. Yeah. No. So, this is how, this is what a geek I am. So, when my dog bit me the other day, I'm looking at him and I just see his fucking canine tooth hanging out of, like, the top of my tattoo on my arm. And I'm like, that's going to hurt like a son of a bitch. And then I look and I'm like, that went through the subcutaneous layer. And then I'm like, I can see the adipose tissue. That's how fucking crazy my life is right now. That's how crazy yeah, it is. Yeah, but you know what, though? It's going to pay off in the long run. It is. Maybe. I mean, I feel like it is. There's a there's a greater good to this whole craziness and this plan. For sure. Like, I, my cousin Misty actually went through nursing school, and now she's a nurse in Oklahoma. Oh, see, it's fa- like I'm so stoked to get to that point finally. The hope is that by next fall I'll be in a program. Well, she said, too, that like she went to Oklahoma – because well, one she met a dumb boy who was dumb, and now they're Stupid not together. Eh, well, they've been on again, off again. Yeah. Anyway, that's her business, not mine. Right. But uh, it's easier to get a nursing job outside of the state of Illinois than it is to get a job in the state of Illinois. It is, and you need a bachelor's in they nursing sh- to get a job in Illinois, basically. Well, and that's pretty much the standard now, anywhere, because they changed it. I want to say about five years ago, it used to be where you could get the associates level, mm-hmm. and then you could get a job hired in as a nurse. But they changed that, and like, there's a lot of statistics out there. Because again, like I'm a math geek too, so I read a lot of that shit. I know nerds guys, totally. Um, but in the state of Illinois, you still have a pretty good chance. Thank you, thank you. Put it in my mouthpiece. Um, you still have a pretty good chance to get a job. That's because by the year 2020, all the fucking baby boomers are going to be old. Well, and by 2020, we'll probably have had a nuclear holocaust <laughs> by then. And at that point, probably. everybody's going to be very dead. Yeah. So I've got a good chance of getting a job. <laughs> so you got that going for you. The time that I graduate, so that's good. That's good stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it's going to be nuts. So and it's going to be crazy for me in the fall too. And then so the if we miss a week, or if it's just going to be my dumbass doing something solo, or possibly with a guest artist, sure. or a, or a guest host, I should say, don't. Don't take it personally that Dana's not here. Or she's just up to her ass and alligators. I hate all of you guys. Not at all. <laughs> I hate you guys hate so much right now. <laughs> God damn it. I'm just too busy trying to learn. Sons of bitches. <laughs> trying to learn the, the, the cells of the bone. Dude, I guess, like, I never oh. got a chance to see it, but when they did the Body Worlds exhibit. Oh, I never went. Man. I know. I Well, I'm like, fuck, man, life sucked. And I when it was in town, I had a, a jobby job. And yeah. the people that I lived with were baristas. Uh, <laughs> so they got to go and do whatever the fuck they wanted, whenever the fuck right. they wanted. And we were like grown ups. Yeah. Yeah. So like I never got to see it, but one of the one of the exhibits was described to me as it, it showed a guy holding his skin, like he yeah. was skinned, to show you like how 
the, 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 your skin is such an organ of it, your body. It's and the it's the largest organ on your, well, they say in, but it's on Well, maybe, your body. It, maybe it's the largest organ on your body. <laughs> but I'm sh- <laughs> My hands are perfectly fine. <laughs> but They're a good size. My mother told me they were great. <laughs> They're wonderful. Exciting. <laughs> it's interesting, though, because that, that's the one thing that I wanted to see and I never got to see. Because, like, we will be doing cadaver studies. Oh, I'm sure semester. it'll be back around. It always it comes back around from time to time. I hope so because where for was me... I was up in Milwaukee and they've got one, but it's it's Body Worlds, but it's animals. See, that's still fucking cool because yeah, it's at the fairly similar. Yeah, I was up in Milwaukee last week for a couple of days for Milwaukee. work. Milwaukee. <laughs> Does this guy know how to party or what? Wait. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they've got the the Body Worlds type thing, but it's animals. Dude, like that's awesome. Yeah, and it's I think it's Sorry, at their. I, I don't know if they can pick that up or Been not, a long day. but I, I, I think it's at their museum of technology, which is probably oh, like the size of, of my house. Colleges. I don't know. Guessing. It's Milwaukee. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no offense to all my, all of our Sorry, zero guys. Milwaukee listeners. But speaking of new listeners, <laughs> holy shit balls, dude. Was that not the coolest thing that I said dude, to you today? Fucking a go ahead. Israel, drop it. Israel, Italy and Germany. Right. I would say hello in your respective languages, but oh, I don't know them. Know and I don't know how you found us, but thank you thank for you. listening, man. That's yeah. awesome. I I, yeah. I I truly like want to tell you we love you yes. and we aren't represented by 45. Right. Yeah. So anytime he says something stupid, listen to Pop Goulash right. instead. <laughs> Agreed. It was the coolest thing though when I looked at Libsyn today. Yeah. I saw that because you know it's got the little like. And it was graph. two listeners or two downloads two. at least. Yeah. So wh- whoever you are, Thank if you, you listen to two episodes, I hope you enjoyed them. Listen Seriously, to more. yeah, right. Tell your friends about us. Seriously, because we're rate us and re- awesome. rate us and review us on iTunes. <laughs> Do something, <laughs> something, please. But yeah, don't don't stray away. Absolutely totally not. Because C- we're only going to get better. Like, Agreed. seriously, I'm practically 40, and I'm sexier now than I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can attest to that, people. I've known him for almost fucking 20 years. Yeah, so. I know, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, today uh, we're just going to, we're winging it. Dana just got done with class. I've had a long day. I'm starting a new job. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm... You can't uh, go into details because no, it's top secret. I, yeah, I don't speak about my jizzob no, here. should you. Uh, because I could probably get terminated from my jizzob just be... T- because of the content of our particular program. <laughs> but uh, let's just say that I'm on the sales end now, at least for a minimum of the next three months. So it is just going to... Okay. It is okay. a temporary thing, but it, they said that bare minimum three months. There, hey. So it'll be through the summer. Better for schedule-wise, though, I feel. Mm, for my, yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of wonky so far, and it's not like... Uh. Uh, what it was sold to us as and what my hours are probably going to be have uh, mm, not really been... Deviated? Yeah, a little bit. A little mm. bit. Um, that sucks. I've come to find hands. out that like maybe more than just a you have to be on the schedule on a Saturday. It's more like, hey, maybe about work four hours on a Saturday because that's when you might have the best time to, to, to work. Or maybe even, hey, go out there on a Sunday. Yeah, fuck it. Give it a shot. Yeah. That's when you should be helping me study for my fucking anatomy class and showing me, like, flashcards. What uh, that should be your husband helping you with anatomy, <laughs> and you should have a little bit more fun with it. <laughs> now, if this is going to sound so morbid and terrible, but if I could skin him and look at the, the, the structures of the skeleton. <laughs> I want I a doctor do to take your picture <laughs> so I can look at you from inside as well. I... I love you, Jake. I'm just kidding. Uh, ish. <laughs> ish. I mean, it would be fun, right? <laughs> I could stitch you back up. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going to kind of play it fast and loose tonight. Yeah. So no real assignments. No. Uh, no. No real. We don't even have like an outline, but like we've never really had an outline. And when we have, we've deviated from yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway. It's like we're a septum fine. up in this bitch. It kind of so. is. And I mean, I, you know, we haven't really had like a catch up episode anyway. No, like. God, we had the well. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Chris Cornell episode. Yes. Like it, that we got was great feedback. Yeah, a lot of great feedback. Thank you again, Jen, for for yes. coming on. And you know, again, I apologize for for the audio issues. We're look, we're still Don't new at this, things. and you know, with this, uh, we have very basic. limited equipment, yeah. basic equipment to get started here. Like, you know, 
maybe we might set up a Patreon here soon, or if you want to yeah. PayPal us, we'll figure that out too. Yeah. You know, just to try to upgrade our equipment a little bit, because let's face it, Dana's in college, I got two kids, can't. and we can't afford shit. Right. Even though I work full-time and go to college, I still can't afford shit, because, yeah. you know, I pay for school. So. Right. So, but, uh, you know, that's probably forthcoming. We don't want to ask money from you guys. But, hey, if you like the show, well, you know, maybe maybe you, you could help us out. You could a 20 or, you know, or a 50. <clears throat> you know, that's, turn it down. <laughs> that's the one biggest lie that Kevin Smith always told about podcasting is, oh, it's free. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. Ugh. Bullshit. This shit cost me 30 bucks a month. That's what, right. You know, and, uh, you know. And when ooh. I post fucking ads on Facebook, you know, depending <clears throat> on what budget I set and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, it's not cheap. Yeah. And, you know, whoa, oh, oh, boo hoo, it's 30 bucks a month. You know how many diapers I buy? That's, that's like a box of fucking diapers, man. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's like a tank of gas. You yeah, know for sure. That's because we're old and like that shit that. Look here, Billy. <laughs> Get off my You might be long. taking your pennies and buying moon whistles and penny. <laughs> <laughs> Penny whistles and moon pies, but damn it, put that shit in the bank. I was wondering where that was going. I'm like, Pen- do you mean moon whistle or penny whistle? Because I think about that shitty. It's like the the um, Cards Against Humanity, the shitty penny whistle solo. That's what I think of. No, uh, for me, it's always the uh, the episode of The Simpsons where Bart gets a job working for the little old lady down the street, <laughs> and she gives him like fifty cents for like busting his ass. Like he completely like cleaned her yard, like scraped the paint on her house. It was like Daniel San, wax on, wax off, and like she gives him fifty cents for like like a busting ass week worth of labor. And she's like, "Don't spend it all on moon pies and penny whistles." <laughs> He's like, "Fuck you, old lady." That's my life goal now, to buy a fucking penny whistle. And a moon pie. <laughs> and a moon pie. <laughs> but you got to drink it with an orange soda or if it's just not even worth it. See, I can't do either, man. That's mm. like the whole diet. You know, I'm not that I'm following a diet, but, you know, I'm trying Dude, to... Dude, before you leave, I made some fucking ribs this weekend. I will not eat them tonight. No, no, no. I'll but give you a couple. You take them you. home. But yeah. holy shit balls. I know. I saw your pictures. Yeah, dude. dude I'm I'm a, I'm a amateur smoker. Dude, it's all good. Yeah. You need and, to get Jake to get <clears throat> onto that shit because he likes that stuff. And I brought yeah. him a smoker for Christmas. It's dude, like a mini one. Hey. Oops, I just fucking hit that. Sorry, peeps. Um, but yeah, I mean, he would. Dude, it's shit. it's just a perfect excuse to sit outside and drink beer all day. Hang out, yeah. You know? I mean, I, I've actually been asking Kirsten and for the boys to get me a, uh, a pellet grill. What the fuck is that? It's basically, okay, so when you saw wood, like, uh-huh. the wood chips go on the floor, right? Yeah. Well, what they do is companies buy that, and they compact them into pellets. Oh. Well, these grills, like, they, you, you, they it's like a time release kind of thing. So okay. you measure out a cup of pellets. Uh-huh. That could be an hour's worth of burn. Really? So you dump it in your thing, you set the temperature for what you want the temperature to be, and it just, you set it, it's like fucking Ron Popeil, man. You set it and forget it. That's awesome. Right? Like, I could smoke a turkey and mow my lawn at the same time and not have to, like, keep coming back to the grill to, like, is it a 180? Is it 180? Is it 180? Oh, God, it's 227. I got to turn it down. (laughs) You know? It's just a better way to regulate the temperature and stuff like that. And I so want one. I saw one at Minards. Minards. (laughs) Seriously, Minards sounds dirty if you say it like a pirate. Try it. No. (laughs) Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it, fucker. Minards. Exactly. <laughs> Arr, look at Minards. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I saw one over the weekend at Minards for like 300 bucks. I'm like, uh, dude, you guys could totally do this. And you would benefit from it. It'd be awesome. Right, right. Everybody I, I wins. For you. Right, right, exactly. Not and like I don't cook for them anyway, but like everybody wins. And it's the summertime. So it's kind right? of, is it like one that just sits outside? Oh, or? yeah. Yeah. No, you wouldn't. You know, there's definitely combustion and fire and fumes you would not use it in the home okay see i wasn't no. sure if it was like a stove top kind of thing or no, like, no, no, okay. no 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 it's 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 a straight up grill Got it. but then i also saw this one that was like a double wide <laughs> and one side was gas the other side was charcoal oh. and i don't like gas grills like i like the convenience and the speed of them kirsten does too because she's like we'd grill but it takes you like a half hour to get it ready i'm like i know but there's it's a beauty in the process no. so but yeah, so I mean, but it that would be like the best of both worlds. I could do a quick grill and then, you know, but I also like to smoke my food too, so. My dad has a combo one where it does the, I, I don't know that it's the double wide per se, like the, the design that you're talking about, but he's got the capability of doing the charcoal or like the, you know, the gas grill, but it also has like this like little pan on there where you can, oh, yeah, you can like, it. oh yeah, totally, awesome. totally. And if I were to get something like that, I'd like to get like a charcoal grill, but with a gas start. Right. 
which would be dope because then the charcoal would light pretty quickly. But like well, close to the reason like I like to use the charcoal is because you get the flavor of the wood. It's like cooking outdoors. You know, right. I get that. <laughs> you know, carcinogens. Yeah, fuck that. They taste They're delicious. delicious. I don't give a shit. We're gonna die someday anyway. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but like, I like cooking on. Like when you cook on gas, you might as well just be cooking on your stove. Kind of how I yeah. It's you know, how I see it too. You're just outside. That's why my dad rarely uses the gas one, like mm-hmm. unless he's trying to like fire something. Yeah, like, for real sure. Quick, like if it's thirty degrees and my dad gets a wild hair up his ass to grill. I know. <laughs> See, and that does. was always like my thing is like, man, I always wanted to just be able to pull the grill out in the middle of June or in the middle of uh, February or yeah. December,ary <laughs> and like light it up and get some grilling going. But I just, it's just, it's a fucking twat whistle out my here in the middle tired. of the. So it, you know, it doesn't it even, doesn't even matter, matter if it won't well, doesn't even matter like the retired or not retired when there's two feet of snow outside I'm not going to trudge out there to start up some charcoal and get a grill going. Oh Don well. I mean but Dude seriously charcoal. I am not Robert Frost and we are not to building a fire, okay? <laughs> like it's not happening. That's why we need to get the fuck out of Illinois. Dude seriously in man. Years. Just saying. Word. So yeah, so then this isn't grill cast. So no, it's I don't not, even but whatever. Whatever cool. fuck it, fuck suck it. it. <laughs> but yeah cuz it's really been God, it's been a while. It's been a couple weeks. No, it's been longer than that since you and I just sat down to do a podcast well, because yeah. we did the Win Whiskey Talks podcast. We did. And then right after that, we tried with Mike Misery, but that yeah. podcast went the same way as Failed. Steve's podcast. So then we did yeah. the the Chris Cornell cast because that happened. Um, so well, really, it's been. Bank at least. Yeah. So it's been almost a month since we've sat down together, at least. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Fuck. Dude. I know. We'll try, I mean, anyway, not that they need to hear that, but we'll try to figure shit out right. better. But, but, dude, like, so. So. <laughs> what so, so have probably. you been consuming? <sighs> um, actually, um, I talk about him a lot, and I'm going to talk about it again. Tony Luca, I... Uh, he did another concert window thing. I think it was it was the day of mine and Jake's anniversary. So on the seventeenth oh, of the month, which oh, was oh, also oh. my wife's birthday. Exactly. Um, and he did another concert window, and it was for his one album called Rendezvous with the Angels. And I, I believe that album dropped in twenty ten. And that oh god, I forgot. Was it? Did, I and I it. can't remember. Did he perform it front to back? He did. Yeah. Nice. So what he does when he does the concert windows, like he'll pick a specific album, and then he will do it acoustic, typically either with his, depending on the song, of course, either with his piano or his guitar, and it was fucking beautiful. It was just great, and bringing back a lot of those songs that I, you know, I of course, like I spin his stuff all the time, but you forget if you don't listen to an album, you know, you kind of flex that sure. muscle. Um, so yeah, a lot of Tony lately. Um, I've been listening to a lot of nineties pop again. Really? Yeah. I just, I just have. You got some cardigans going on. <laughs> well, love me, love me. I fucking hate that song. Really? So much. I like the band, hate the song. Huh. I've been, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Go on. You were going to, you were going to ask me a question. No, 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 no. Cause I just remember when that album was out, like. That album, that song was like the only song that sounded Huge. like that, yeah, though, that on the record. Like, that's what I was going to say. That was the only one on that album. It kind of reminded like, me of like um, Crash Test Dummies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Only song in the album that sounded like that. It and was. that album was excellent. It was. But it was overshadowed by. Because again, the single that gets all the fucking airplay, you know. Which... But then again, that kind of goes back to our, would you sell out once to right. do what you want to do? Right. I mean, I, kudos to them. I, well, the funny thing was when that uh, that song came out, that whole mm, was kind of like uh, better than Ezra's. Uh oh, yes. it was a placeholder. They yes. didn't have it. He couldn't think of anything to put in the place of uh, uh, putting that place to the song. Sure. And that was just a placeholder, and they were like, that kind of works. See, I. It's those beautiful mistakes. This is true, but it, you know the fantastic mistakes that gain you millions and millions of. Sales listeners and listeners and probably put you in the poor house because you're a one hit wonder probably but yeah i unless you're ice or vanilla ice and oh you just God. were smart with your money and you banked it <laughs> like dude homeboy is like still he bloody is. rich good for robert van winkle i've also been jamming to a lot of no doubt lately i've been going I've, back. yeah i've seen that on on facebook a yeah. lot i've been going back i i can't recall if i've mentioned this or not but the return of saturn album mm-hmm. is by far yeah. Hands down, that 
and Beacon Street Collection. Like those are my two favorite. That, the Beacon Street that was like their old school shit, right? That like was, between Tragic Kingdom and their first and the album. First, no doubt, no doubt. Yep. I love. Don't get me wrong. I love Tragic Kingdom. I love that album for the most part, front to back. But Beacon Street, because what Beacon Street was, that was like they're still like in the. Ed- they were like ditching their sky years. Yes and yes. So and um, did you know that? Gwen Stefani's was it Gwen Stefani's brother brother? and he left to go write for the Simpsons yes yeah he did and so he wound up he left probably like right before Tragic Kingdom really came out and he wasn't I don't believe he was on the on Tragic Kingdom was he um his songwriting credits were I believe he was actually on the album cover but standing way far back um but yeah, like so so Beacon Street, I was doing a little bit of research on that actually last week or the week before, I think. And that particular album was a lot of the B-side shit that they knew that they couldn't get onto Tragic Kingdom because I believe that they were already signed to Interscope at that time. Mm-hmm. And um they knew that they wanted to still put the songs out. So what they did was they made the Beacon Street collection, which was also a contractual obligation album. Uh, not Beacon Street. No, that was on Interscope. Yes. No, nah, I don't think so. Because really? from from what I recall from reading the article, they actually sold that at shows, so it's out of print. Hmm. You can get like you can buy it now, but it's a reprint. Okay. So I think that I actually because have... I I remember Kiss the Sky carried it. Yeah. Because it was the one with the bird in the mouth. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. And it's that yes. was the album cover. That's that that's what I'm referring cover. to. But yeah, it, that was actually, they sold it at shows, and they sold a lot of that album at shows, but yeah, it was not contractual, because it was, Tragic Kingdom was. Right, well, because a lot of times they'll release a B-Sides album just to have like to a- drum con- up the interest. Well, not even like to drum up the interest. Well, like, let's say like they've got a five album deal. Sure. Well, they'll put out a B-Sides compilation or a Greatest Hits that counts towards those five albums. Yeah, this one was definitely not on that, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it's I've been jamming to a lot of that stuff lately because Beacon Street is totally different than Tragic Kingdom. It just is. Yeah. I mean, of course, a lot of the subject matter, you know, it's got to do with Gwen coming into her own and she had a lot more songwriting credits as well. So because she took over the songwriting when her brother and his name, Eric, I think, maybe. Eric Stefani, that's right. Eric Stefani. Um because he used to write yeah. for the band. Mm-hmm. Be- and, and I think he was a keyboard player. I, I think, think he, he was, was originally a keyboard, a keyboard player. player. Well, because they started to kind of um, stop the foray of, of the ska stuff after that one guy. Yeah, I know. Is it's is it shitty sound. Um, the one guy died, and I can't remember what he died from. Um, but that's when they started changing their... like. The arrangements and stuff. Yeah, I st- kind of move more away from ska to more pop rock. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting for me though too because um yeah like you go from the very first album that they released, no doubt, no mm-hmm. doubt, which was hella ska. Oh, the, the whole thing. Dude, Total Hate is still one of my favorite I songs love on that, that damn song. And it, it's interesting though to listen to the progression. Like I personally don't really care for anything of no doubts, like anything new. Really, after Return of Saturn, even the Hella Good album, or I'm sorry, Rocksteady, Rocksteady. Was that album, I re- I saw her. On Although that, that tour. the Simple Kind of Life, that that, that was cover on that they Saturn. that was on Return of Saturn, really? Because I I swear to God that was on that was like on no. a Greatest Hits compilation is like the 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 special song that they would record for like including two unreleased songs. Yeah, no, that was on Return of Saturn because okay. that that song, <clears throat> um, the video is gorgeous too for that song. Um, yeah, it was not it. it Hell, uh, that that whole album rock study. I saw her on the Return of Saturn tour the first time, and then the second time that I saw her was for the Rock Study tour. And I just, I the songs on that album, it was a lot of reggae vibe, which is cool. I like reggae. Music. Oh yeah, because that's the one where she had the oh god, I can't remember the chick's name. Oh, but that know. song, I just want to like hella good. No, 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 no. Well, that one sucked too, but it's no, it was the one that like. The fuck was the name of the song? Let me pull up the album because <laughs> I, I I was not like I said not a super fan of that album. Um, I just didn't because I get it. Okay, I get it. Bands are going to change and they're going to change their sound over time. But that's how I felt about even some of their newer shit that they released a few years back too. I just didn't like it. It wasn't my forte. Um, Underneath it all, uh, yeah, that fucking oh, that fucking song, that song makes me want to choke a baby. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, it was <clears throat> underneath it all. That was the one because the the singles on that album, of course, were hella good. Hey, baby, 
underneath it all. And I think, I feel like, uh, I think that was it. Running I think was another one. Yeah, maybe? I don't recall that one. I don't know, but it was a shitty album. But I've, <laughs> I've been listening to the other stuff that was actually good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, just yeah, that's really kind of what I've been getting back into. And yeah, I, I've stuff I've seen uh, I saw No Doubt a bunch of times on the first times. tour. I saw him at Q and One's Jamboree. Okay, and that's when I met Gwen and tony canal oh man but that's another story that i'm still waiting to get eli on the podcast Damn to it, tell eli and then uh we saw him at the metro that would have been a dope fucking venue to see them at. with uh goldfinger oh, yes. and the executioners i think interesting or the x members i had an excellent i don't remember we didn't we didn't but like it was a tiny like met- we've spoken about the metro before and it's oh, such a tiny little I still venue. Love that venue. But it was cool. I mean, we were right there. Oh. Like, and it was cool. But like, it was one of those where we realized that Gwen doesn't understand how people come to see multiple shows over multiple eras. Right. And every time I've seen them, right before they do spider webs. Oh God. Do you ever get those annoying phone calls? Shut up, Gwen. <laughs> Think of some fresh banter between your freaking songs. Like, look, I, you know, whatever. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna talk shit. That's I don't funny. care. Because, like, I was gonna go off on a rant about Gavin Rosdale and then Toby Keith or whatever stupid hillbilly hick she's all hooked up with now from The Voice. Oh, the one who was married to Miranda Lambert. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is his name? I can't even remember his name off the top of my head right now. Yeah, That's Douchey funny. McBaggerson. That's how fried my brain is right <laughs> now. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what his name is. But, like, I'm just like, I don't care. I know. Like, Seriously, that's why you haven't had a hit single. And let, don't even get me started on her solo career. That is just hot garbage. I, I'm telling you, that's I, I completely agree with you. That's why I never got into her Which solo Which I think shit. it's so incredible that, like, how prophetic the Don't Speak video was. Well, you know that they purposely wanted the video set up that way because it was already starting where everybody was pulling Gwen out because she was the star, you know, according to everything. So they purposely, the video originally, if if I'm recalling correctly, they wanted it to be about the breakup of Gwen and And Tony. Tony. But um, because there was a lot of turmoil in the band at that point and like a couple of the members... Now, of course, they weren't really going to leave, but they had talked about it because they yeah. were pissed off about the attention that she was getting. They wanted to make it even more like a, a fuck you to the media and stuff. Like, we we see what you guys are trying to do, and we're trying to, like, circumvent that. Yeah, but it ended up just becoming a self prof- self, self, self-fulfilling self prophecy. Absolutely. You know, so I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah, I just, yeah, man, her solo stuff, I'm not a fan of. I never was. I just, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. But yeah, I, so God, what else? Oh, uh, well, started getting into um, The Cure. No, I shouldn't say getting into, but... I just started out. listening to The Cure. Started listening to the Cure. Have you ever heard of this band, The Cure? <laughs> well, oh, Ruben Embarrassing Moment number 432. And 1987, I came up to my uncle at one point. I'm like, Cubby. Yes, my uncle's name is actually Cubby. <laughs> It's on his birth certificate, fuckers. Just, just like my name is fucking Ruben Hood. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> we just have interesting names in my family. But uh, I came up to my uncle, and it was right when uh, uh, Permanent Vacation by Aerosmith comes oh, out. Oh, yeah. I'm like, Cubby, you have to hear this new band. He's like, oh, really? What is it? And like the video came on MTV. Cubby, Cubby, come here. Come here. It's, it's on. This new band is on. Cubby looks at me like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> I saw Joe Perry punch out Steven Tyler like four years ago <laughs> on stage. Oh, we've got <clears> a special <throat> guest. Hey, buddy. Hey, Ricky Dog. Hi, puppy. Hey, Bubba. So the Ricky Dog decided to come down and hi, join buddy. us. Say hi. Hi. I know. You can bump your butt on the table all you want. It's funny. Like, every, like I've, I've called him the Ricky Dog ever since he was a pup. Oh, and like I everybody's know. like, I, I don't think they understand the reference. Like, and I got it from Sublime. Yeah. The Louie dog. Yeah. I got my Ricky dog. He had the Louie dog. He's so cute. Yeah. What's up, monkey? <sighs> so, but yeah. yeah. Dusted off some of my old Cure stuff, like obscure things. Like, Remind me before we go, I've got some Cure stuff for you I know you don't have. Okay. I, 
you would be surprised. I, I doubt you have this stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Challenge accepted. Um, <laughs> always. But I posted something on the page the other day that actually Riot Fest initially shared. And it was one of the very first um, like television appearances. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And like, look. What happened to him? It's, you know what, because, so they started out Easy Cure, like, they were some other band name before that, too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all of the original right, right, right. members. The performance um, was phenomenal. It was fucking great. And, I don't know if you recognize, though, the lyrics to A Forest were completely fucking different. No, I know, I did recognize, I'm like, I don't know these words. Why yeah. did I not know these words? Totally different. Well, like, I told one of my Because that's like, honestly, that's my favorite Cure era. Oh, that's a that's a fantastic era. Like, and, and everybody's like, "Oh, disintegration! Disintegration's a great record." It's that was like it's a, a turning point for them. But like, I really like kind of the punk rock era of or post punk, post punk, or yeah. post new or po new wave era of the Cure. Yeah, like that whole sand in the what is it? Sand in, not sand in the face. Staring at the sea. That greatest hits album. That, that era. Album. Is like my favorite era of the Cure. Sand and the Vaseline is the Talking Heads. I know, fuckers. No I know. Greatest hits albums, though. But if you really want to like listen to those songs, of course, like that that really spans like the very first album through. Um, what head, head on, on the, the door. door? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the Cure, the Cure. I mean, obviously, like all of those songs on there. I, like I just I, I've been getting because that was just like that really like innovative stuff. Like nothing know. sounded like that, and that's I think we may have discussed it on a previous podcast about how different all of those bands sounded well because or did we discuss that or was it another podcast i was listening to I don't think that we sometimes did. i forget what we talk about and what other <laughs> i hear other people but like a lot of that era like because the police was coming well yeah because the police were, came out right around that right. time the new cure order. was coming new order and they all were like oh you know what it was I was listening we to CNN? no. I was listening to the Nerdist, and Dave Gahan was on it. Okay, because he was coming up right around that same yeah. time frame, and he was like, "We were all these like bands, and the whole like punk thing was like a two year period, right? And everything that broke after that was all these bands. Like he's like, yeah, I saw the I saw the Clash, I saw mm -hmm. you know the Sex Pistols, and it was like a two year period, and right. then after that, everything just exploded. Well, and it did, and, and they were all like. All the bands after that time frame, they were super supportive of each other. It was kind of like that was their version of what was going on at the Whiskey at Go-Go at the same time period in New York. Well, that's L.A. No, the Whiskey. No, yeah. the Whiskey. No, I'm thinking uh, uh, CBGBs. I'm sorry, not the Whiskey. What was going on at the Whiskey was heavy metal hard rock at that time. Right. That's when <clears> a lot of the glam bands were that's when the around, well, too. And that was li yeah. maybe the startish of it. It was it. starting because Motley Crue was big on that. Yeah, too. I think, yeah. You had a lot of those kind of bands, but the, I was watching something. Um, I had seen it before on CNN. And the soundtracks. Was, no, actually, that show got pulled. It never. Really? I was really sad. Mm. It, there was only ever three episodes that aired, um, but it was the '80s. They're coming out with the '90s yes. soon. Yes, we were talking about this. Um, I caught it uh, on a rerun this past weekend when I was up late fucking studying. Um, but they were talking about all of that British explosion because it was the dawn of MTV, and they yes. were discussing how MTV really shaped the culture. Of the music at the time plus it got the exposure for these weirdo bands that nobody else would play well the reason why it happened that way though is because they didn't have american bands american musicians didn't really understand the music video concept so much but all these people in britain totally fucking got it well yeah the, the beatles it. had been making music videos well, right way they, back in the day because they would play them on like top of the pops well right but they didn't necessarily speak to the beatles as much as like all of these bands. so flock of seagulls and then you had depeche mode then you had the new order which sprung from joy division then you had the cure um the police and they god i love the fucking police i do too i love them so much and they specifically talked about that the term new wave came around and I think it was actually the guy from the flock of seagulls who said it. He's like, we're the new wave of whatever the hell he said. Mm -hmm. And that's where that term came around. And Interesting. Then you had a lot of the American bands jump on that. So then you had, you know, the go-go's and then you had like all of those new wave quote unquote. Well, yeah. Well you had like the, in the, the, the U S counterparts would have been like Blondie, the go-go's, right. um, talking heads, right. the Ramones. Right. Um, yeah, I would consider the Ramones in that because they were, wave? well, yeah, because they weren't punk. Punk had ended by that point. But they were still always more lumped in that because they but came they were out lumped, of CBGBs. <clears throat> well, all of the bands I just named came out of CBGBs. They were all yeah. like the CBGB staples. Well, Blondie was also they. She started out. She did kind of like the funk, but also well, she was a modeling punk. career. She was also uh, Rapture was the first 
video ever on MTV with a rap in it. Yes. And yes. it was the most horrific white girl rap ever. Oh, it was ever. fucking terrible. But it's so iconic now. <clears throat> we were also talking, this was interesting, and because I we were f- fairly young at the time when MTV first premiered, but they were talking about how... Um, I think I was four. I was like three. Four or five when it first came out. Because uh, I remember the whole, I want my MTV. It was like 1980. 83, I think. No, it was like 80 when it first aired. No. Yeah, dude, because the very first video... Hey, Siri. <laughs> The very first video was Video Kill the Radio Star by The Buggles. When did MTV debut? She didn't say shit. Um, I don't know. It it was definitely, it was either. Serious stupid. I th- it might have been December of 80, but it was definitely er, like 80. Um, but yeah, they were talking about how they only had like 100 plus videos in rotation, but they didn't have any black music um, yeah. and the only reason that it ever even happened is because Michael Jackson was on CBS records and they basically CBS records basically told MTV fuck you if you don't get him on there we're pulling all of our other artists who you are <clears throat> playing their videos who are on our label it landed yourself. on August 1st of 1981 okay so it was 81 mm-hmm. I was close but so I was four yeah no, 81, you were four? 78. You wouldn't have been four. You would have been three, because I was two. All right, well, fuck you. <laughs> I don't math, okay? I do, though. But, um, so it was August, okay. No, 35 years ago. I was four, fucker. You said it debuted in 81. Yeah. 78 to 79, 79 to 80, 80 to 81. Oh, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, that's <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, I don't math. Okay, I do. suck it. So, at any rate, but that's how that's how a lot of the black artists started getting their way onto MTV was because of Michael Jackson, and it was because of his performance. Ah, oh, shit, and I can't remember. It was um when he did the moonwalk. No, it was before then because the moonwalk happened. I was just reading about this the other night because the moonwalk happened in eighty. That was like eighty three. Eighty four because Billie Jean. no, it was not. The moonwalk originated. On an awards show, it was on the yeah. Grammy Awards because that was when the well, yes, it was. It God damn it! The I, Grammys, yes, though. it was the Grammys because it was when the Jacksons got back together. Yes, I just I read about this the night before because I watched it the other. I'm not trying to argue with. Yes, you, you are. But I'm telling you, I watched this and it was specifically because he was performing Billy Jean. When did Jean. Michael Jackson first do the moonwalk? A popping move. It became popular around the world after Michael Jackson performed the dance move during a performance of Billie Jean on Motown 25. Yesterday, today, forever. Check and mate. Fuck you. It was the Motown. I knew it was yes, one of the Yes, but labels. that was the exact same time because what had happened was during this, um, the um, the Jacksons had gotten back together for the Victory album. So what they did was the Jacksons performed a song, then Michael Jackson performed performed Billie Jean and stole basically the entire Jackson's reunion because it was him and Jermaine that were both performed. But it was the Motown. It was the Motown 25. That's what I said. It wasn't the Grammy. I knew it wasn't the Grammy. Well, it was some type of TV show, fucker. God damn. I'm not... Relax, dude. Semantics. So my point was is that that's when it broke big and that's when they really understood that they needed artists like him on... MTV and then it paved the way for Prince and then Whitney Houston and then all of all of these other artists that finally started well and then and then the rotation. one thing that really kind of tied everything together surprisingly was the uh, the rock and wrestling when um, Cindy Lauper she came into oh the God. fold and yeah. she was big fr- she was good friends with Captain Lou Albano right and he was and in the he was in the have fun well thing. he was also in the Goonies are good enough video as well yeah he was and that's when that kind of tied that whole thing together right along the same time that WrestleMania one was happening so there was like a big tie in between WrestleMania and uh, and MTV like MTV was one of the main per- like promoters of it that's interesting and that's how the WWF. I don't give a fuck if they call it WWE now. It was the <laughs> WWF. Sorry, World Wildlife Foundation. It, I, <laughs> fuck you. Um, but that's how the WWF rocketed to the stardom that they had was because of the MTV generation. Because say what you will about Vince McMahon and, and how he runs his business. He's a smart fucking businessman. 
And at that time frame, he knew what he had to do, and he tied it in with the MTV generation because Hulk Hogan was all over that piece. And it doesn't totally shock me to hear that, though. I mean, I you know, I remember that because that was right around the time where I was totally into wrestling. So I was like, I was into it, man. You know, my nose is killing me right now. They, they, I remember they had a press conference at the time. I think it was at Madison Square Garden, and Cindy Lauper was there, and it was basically like, "Hey, we're announcing." you know wrestlemania one and cool. rowdy roddy piper like for some reason cindy lauper was like trying to present i think she had a gold record and she was trying to present it to uh hulk hogan or something blah 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 during this press conference uh-huh. and it was like one of those you know like the boxing where they like get on the things and they're like you know yeah and apparently like um rowdy roddy piper kicked her <laughs> and like you know, that's the thing. That was the tipping point that ignited the whole WWF and really kind of kicked off all the wrestling fans and brought them into the MTV fold. That's cool. And to his death, Roddy Roddy Piper said the biggest regret he ever had was treating Cindy Lauper that way. He said she was a wonderful woman, but he is also, he was voted like the number one heel, which means bad guy in the wrestling world of all time understandable yeah i i dude shit. that that era was my like when i was a kid into wrestling man like roddy roddy piper was my my shit right there i didn't have mtv i didn't have cable until <sighs> i was in college no i i think i was like eight or nine but like like i didn't i only knew mtv from my cousin's house being able to go there and watch it right like that's all that i knew well, yeah because cable listened. wasn't as prevalent back then we had five channels right well not not we had more than that but. but like i always listened to the radio and stuff back then but yeah like so totally like spun off on that one but uh sorry no that's okay um but that's i mean that's pretty much what i've been consuming besides my anatomy lab and uh textbook over this last few weeks i mean i you know nice. time's been kind of crunched what about you what have you been oh let's see here um a lot of sound garden well a yeah. lot of sound garden a lot of uh chris cornell stuff i've even been trying to get into his two solo albums that i really didn't care for the carry on and scream scream was the one that he did with timbaland as the producer really yeah it's weird it's a weird record. Did not know that. Like, it was not very well received by anyone, critics or fans alike, but I appreciate the fact that he tried something different. You know a fun fact about him, too? So Buckley's, uh, the, the 20th uh, anniversary, I guess, of his passing was yesterday right. on the 29th. Uh, I guess he, Chris Cornell, was like a big uh, influence behind the Nightmares by the Sea album. Really? Helping choose songs and whatnot for it. You know, if anyone would have been able to cover Chris or Jeff Buckley, it would have been Cornell. Not that he covered him, but it was... No, 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 no. I'm not saying that he did. I'm just saying if anyone were to have covered Buckley, uh huh, it would have been, it could have been Chris Cornell. I think Cornell had the vocal range to do it. Oh, he... Did. Sure. Sure. And, and he would have done it and it would have sounded probably better. But that's my opinion, man. Totally your opinion. I mean, I, I think it was just an interesting little fun fact for me. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That. And I was like, that's kind of awesome because they were. Well, they were label mates. Age. I mean, they were both on Sony because I want to mm-hmm. say that Cornell's solo records, with the exception of the first one, I think uh, the second two were on was Sony. On Columbia. Columbia is owned by Sony. Oh, yeah, that's right. I yeah. always forget that shit. Yeah, but I want to say that uh, Carry On and Scream were both released by Sony because. Um, Euphoria Morning, which is the one I told you to listen to. Yeah. Did you like that one? Yeah, I really Dude, liked it. It's a beautiful it. record. Um, but those two were released on on Columbia okay. as well. So they were label mates by just, you know, not at the same time, obviously, because I think Buckley was dead well before he was, Columbia. He passed in 97. Yeah, yeah. Those two albums so. were like in 2000 and 2004. Yeah. Um, I went back and started listening to Tripping Daisy again. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, my buddy Charlie, who came over to the house last on Sunday, uh-huh. whom I'm hoping that we can get next week, or a week from next week. Are they back in town? They're, yeah, they're going up to Michigan for a family vacation, and then they're coming back down. So okay. I'm hoping next a week from, two weeks from this weekend. So not next week, the following week. Okay. They'll be back down. I'm hoping to get him on the podcast, because he's a young kid, but damn, the kid's talented. Yeah. Um, he went to go see a band called The Vandaliers. And they're kind of like a country rock band. Sounds familiar. Because, I mean, I like that. That's kind of like my Your forte thing, as well. Yeah. yeah. So he went to go see them. 
and uh, we went to go see him at Good Records in Dallas. Okay. Good Records is owned by Tim DeLauder of Tripping Daisy, the ah. singer. Good Records is the record label owned by Tim DeLauder from Tripping Daisy. Okay. That's what um, the Polyphonic Spree featuring Tim DeLauder was. Okay. He put that, basically, they put he, they self-released. So, like, I was like, oh, man, you were, really? He's, and my buddy Jonesy, uh, Charlie's dad, was like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes we've seen him there. He's just, work, he works behind the counter sometimes. I'm like, I'm like well, what? <laughs> what? Like, this is, a, this is like a hero from my childhood, man. Get like Tara and Brooks to go there. Yeah, seriously. So, yeah, I've been listening to some Tripping Daisy. Like, I, I tried to listen to the very last album, and I still, I can't get through it. Like, I never got into them, so yeah, I only have a frame of reference. No, and that's fine. That's fine. Like, they're, it was very psychedelic rock. Mm-hmm. But the last album, um, their guitar player OD'd oh. and died during the recording of the album. Jesus. And it was like a combination of cocaine and sleeping pills or something like that. It was it was bad shit. And he, it was when I was in the dorms at NIU because I remember uh, printing out a picture of him and putting him on my door. Uh, West Berglin, mm-hmm. you know, dead too soon. Um, so they put out a posthumous album with him on it. And like his dad played Rhodes piano keyboard wow. on like the opening track. And I just still it's like the direction the band took at that point. It was just not the same okay and like you said bands evolve and i get that sure. but it just you know every band has one phenomenal album in them and every band has at least one shitty record and i'm not right. saying this out record is shitty it's just not my favorite of all their albums okay so but i went back and listened to elastic firecracker which had i got a I girl, got a girl. Yep. and piranhas okay. and it that's a fun record it's just a fun record still that's to this the only one i'm familiar with still to this day i think their best album is bill which is their first album. Okay. And that, that album is just a fun, fun record. Uh, Jesus Hits Like the Atom Bomb is, an, is another one. That was the one that came out right before their posthumous self-titled album. Okay. And that one's a good record as well. I enjoy that one a lot. But, I, I mean, I remember me and my buddy Ziggler going to Tripping Daisy shows at the Metro so often that, like, Tim would recognize us in the crowd, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so I've been listening to that. Um I uh, I downloaded the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Sardust because I oh, heard somebody like nice. raving about it. I, I listened to a little bit of it. I can't like I'm gonna. I'm, it's one of those I think that I'm gonna have to listen to with headphones on. That's what I was actually gonna suggest. I mean, I've listened to it a few times myself, but it's definitely one of those that you have to. I don't want to say work to listen to, but I guess that's the best way that I can. Well, it's a concept album. It tells a story, right. so I'm. It's one of those where like I right. can't just like have it on and make breakfast. Right. You know, it's one of those I'm gonna have to like really listen to it right um but i also like the other day i listened to some sly and the family stone oh nice i I had to like i always think about them when i listen to bumpus because i know bumpus really local chicago band of course um i know that they had such an influence from sly and they're just ah just funk i love that i love that so much yeah and sly was one of the best man like oh i just wish that like Somebody would go back and take those old tapes and just truly like remaster them properly. Because I, I mean, granted, like they're old, they're old. You know, they're like right. late sixties, early seventies. That's, that's what I was gonna say, like fifty years old. Almost, <clears throat> yeah, them, maybe. getting there. No, not that, not quite that old, but it was still, early seven, at least early seventies. Well, that's only like forty six years. I mean, but yeah, almost fifty. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. I, like, look, that's only like grade school away from where i'm at right that's now because we're getting old and shut we up to, like like when we say shit like that it i know makes it sounds so much crazier yeah. i know but so yeah so i was listening to that and god damn man sly just made he knew how to write a song dude mm-hmm. and there was so like much of the music that we listened to hip-hop wise oh god yeah totally that influenced. reached back to that and even 100%. sampled from it oh, you know yeah. i remember the very first time i ever saw pearl jam they did a cover of everyday people Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, that was when, like, it was on, it was, when I saw them for the first time, it was between Vitology and No Code. Okay. So it was 95, the summer of 95. So, like, they had three albums worth of material, so they filled their show with a bunch of, like, weird-ass covers. They did that. They did uh, uh, "My Light, Let My Love Open the Door by Pete Townsend. Oh, wow. Um, they did, uh, oh, shit. 
Well, they did the Sly and the Family Stone cover of, um, did I say which one they did? Everyday no. People. Everyday People. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did a bunch of weird covers that night. That's cool. And now all they do is like, you know, Bob O'Reilly to close out the show. And I'm like, I, it's a good tune, but like, Eddie, seriously, dude. Pick something else. Like, dude, seriously, I don't ever have to hear Bob O'Reilly ever again. Like, I know it's a cool song, but none of your fans are in a teenage wasteland anymore. We've gotten through it. We're on the other side. That's how I feel, like, when I see The Cure Live, though, too, in some of their closers. And it's like, you know, those motherfuckers are going to come out three times and do... Do Just Like Heaven. Yeah. And they're going to do Friday I'm in Love. Right. You know, they're not going to do any of the cool old shit that you want to hear them do. Although they did do that last year when I saw them in concert. But it was more like the meat and the potatoes of the concert rather than the encore so much. But still, like that's that's one of my pet peeves about any large, you know, large scale. Well, yeah, band. and you know, at this point in time, like, look, they're going to play the hits. They're going to play the shitty songs off the new album that are shitty that they feel that they have to play or that they right. they feel that are like the best representations of that album. Right. Even though the album is suck shit, like fucking Lightning Bolt. God <laughs> damn it, Pearl Jam! Why the fuck did you put the ugh? Apparently, they're working on new material. They should have a new album out here, hopefully by the end of the summer. I hope it gets better. I really do. But they are also kind of dad rock at this point. <laughs> so I hate to agree with that, but you're right. You know, and but eh, whatever, you know, Eddie Vedder picked up a ukulele and that was the end of their career. <laughs> like he did one good album with the ukulele. That was the end of the wild soundtrack. And that was like such a good soundtrack. See, I just. Have you heard the Into the Wild soundtrack? No. As a singer songwriter, like Jizz Fest that you are, you have to listen to the Into the Wild soundtrack. I'll check it's that out. all like it's better, but it's all singer songwriter stuff. I'll check it's, that out. It's absolutely phenomenal. I'll like it's it. like I cannot speak more good about record than that record. Like it is wonderful. I'll check it out. Yeah. Like Hard Sun was a single on that. And like, God damn it, that album was fucking phenomenal. Because well, the movie was uh, was produced by Sean Penn, who's the director of the movie. Really? Yeah. And he and Vetter are like BFFs. So, I think if I saw that movie, I'm trying to recall. It was based on a book. It was a true story. Yep. I d- it was with Reese Witherspoon, right? No, that was no. that was just wild. That's what I'm thinking of. Which was that. also based on a true story. No, this one was based on this kid that came from a very affluent family who decided, like, fuck you all. I'm just going to take, I'm going to write a check for my entire inheritance, and I'm going to cash it. I'm going to take my money, and I'm going to burn it. Okay. And he his whole thing was he just wanted to get to Alaska and get the fuck away from everybody. And it was his adventure. Like, they found his diary. The kid... It's no spoiler because, I mean, it's been published and the movie's been out for, like, ten fucking ten years. ten years, yeah. So, but at the end of the movie, he ends up starving to death. Oh, he did. And, and once he gets to the... Um, once he gets to Alaska, uh-huh. he, like, hunts this moose. Or he's hunting. He kills this moose. He's trying to, like, preserve the meat, and the meat goes rancid, and he has nothing else to do, and he's so delirious from oh. from hunger. He's got, like, a, a camping book, like, How to Survive in the Wild, uh-huh. and he finds these seeds, but he's, like, so wicked, like, hallucinogenic from not eating for weeks on end uh-huh. that, like, he eats the wrong seed, oh. and basically the seed is one of these that, like, yeah, you consume it, and you might be able to eat some stuff, but your body won't process it. You just shit it out or you throw it up. Oh, geez. And there's like, they, basically, if you eat it, you poison yourself, you die. Unless you can get like serious medical attention ASAP. Oh. And he, they, I guess like weeks after he died, or I, I don't know the time frame, but shortly after he passed away, a group of hunters found him emaciated, passed out dead in the, in his, in this oh, bus God. that he was camping out in. Right. But like his story, like, you know, you almost, it's hard to feel bad for the kid because he was like this entitled asshole kid that like just decided to give up on everything. Sure. But at the same time, like you do feel bad for him because all he wanted to do was just be free. Right. That was the whole concept of the, the movie right. was all he wanted to do was be free. Ugh. And he, he, he paid the ultimate price. I'll have to check that out yeah. when there I was have a... some downtime. I mean, in between like study breaks or something. I mean, it was a good movie. 
and it was it's worth watching. I think Catherine Keener's in it. Okay. Um, Vince Vaughn has a cameo in it. He plays a small character in really? it. He plays like a farmer that ends up getting arrested for like income tax evasion or some <laughs> shit. Um, but Vince Vaughn does have a small part in it. Yeah, Catherine Keener isn't. He? I believe Catherine Keener is in it because he goes to like this weird commune. Like he ends up in this weird like uh, like motorhome co- commune, and I'm not talking like you know motorhome like your redneck cousin lives in. Like actual like Winnebago's. Like these oh, people sure. just like they're drifters. Okay. And they just have this community. And oh, what's her name? Um, wooden actress Twilight. Kristen Stewart's in it. Oh, okay. And she's like 14 at the time. Oh, jeez. And she's actually really good in it. Well, she was also in that movie. What was it? Adventureland or whatever. A few years after that, a couple of years after, wasn't it Adventureland with the kid from um, the Social Network or whatever? Yeah, but he was also in Zombieland too. So I kind of confused those two movies. But I believe she was in Adventureland because yeah. that was the one about the theme park. Yes. But kind of on a weird aspect so Reynolds was was in that movie too was ryan Reynolds in it i know it was um i know bill Hader was in it and Kristen stewart were in it as well yeah because everybody lost it after ryan reynolds because he's um because he's fucking dreamy and well, he's he deadpool is dreamy but uh what was the fucking song i can't remember off the top of my head regardless like we won't go down that beaten path but um yeah i'm pretty sure that 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 was the movie at that yeah end. yeah anyway so but yeah it's a good movie it's definitely worth a check out huh. definitely worth a check out i don't know if it's streaming anywhere right now or if you'd have amazon to get it on online. amazon it's probably 2.99 or whatever that's but fine. but uh but yeah that's it's kind of but i've been watching fucking movies dude dude that's what that's what when you said katherine keener i'm like let's get down to brass tacks well before we get down to that one dude i saw john wick too I know you're, seen dude. I know you haven't seen like number one or you know chapter two, but like, okay, the entire premise of John Wick. Hey, are you familiar at all? Nope. Keanu Reeves plays a hitman, and he's retired. He and this is all John Wick one. And basically, I've just retitled both of these movies. Fucking Keanu Reeves kills everybody. <laughs> but in the first movie, he. Um, he is he's retired he's married and his wife dies of some disease okay. she's just <laughs> dead well in a postscript of that scene you see that she gives him a puppy and she's like i want you to love him as much as you love me you know it's cute it was very sweet uh-huh so you know it's just him and he puts his puppy in this awesome old ass car that he has and he drives to this fucking gas station do you watch game of thrones no you should watch game of thrones uh, when I know. <laughs> when? Well, oh, finally. The tables have turned, motherfucker. When? The tables have turned. Oh, you need to watch this. When can I watch it? I got fucking kids. Oh, yeah, 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 but there. guess what, though? There. What was I fucking doing when I was taking my classes before, though, too? Like, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, well, you know what, though? Life. My Yeah, well, here's the deal. Uh, your classes will be temporary and over soon. I still have these two little rugrats upstairs. Anyway, um, but so... <clears throat> he runs into this kid at a gas station that's like, hey, I want your car. And the guy's like, and Keanu Reeves is like, fuck you, no, it's my car. Well, they find they they end up finding out who it is, and they track him down, and they steal his car, and they kill his puppy. Oh. Keanu Reeves, at that point, John Wick, goes down to his basement with, like, a sledgehammer and just, like, bashing this section of concrete out. He opens it up, and there are all these fucking guns and all this shit out underneath there. Like, he, he like, he basically buried his old life and brought it back. And, and, like, these movies are, like, the revenge flicks of all revenge flicks. <laughs> and he just goes and, like, murders the entire Russian mafia. Like, it's amazing. Like, it doesn't sound like much. It sounds like a lot of death and destruction. And I'm going to have to get an Allen wrench and tighten that back up. That's why yeah. it keeps like, that's why it keeps like hanging to the left. It's all good. You people can't see this, but <laughs> it's her microphone. It's like a limp dick right now. Well, it's not limp. It just kind of hangs to the left a bit. Yeah, it's kind of limp. Anyway, <laughs> I wouldn't know. Um, but yeah, so then the second movie picks up. And the, my only complaint about John Wick Chapter 2 is that the first 20 minutes of the movie are the last 20 minutes of the previous movie. Well, that's kind of a rip-off. It is, but it's also two and a half, or it's a two-hour movie. <laughs> so the second movie, basically, he's, like, contracted. He has, like, a blood oath to this mafia, and he has to c- complete this hit. Uh-huh. And I don't want to, like, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but Common's in it, 
and they have like this battle between the two of them. Okay. And like there's this in both movies there's this hotel called the Continental which is like a safe haven for all like hitmen. Uh-huh. It's like the hitmen hostel. Okay. And like you go there and you're safe and you know there's no bloodletting on the on the grounds of the, of the hotel so like hitmen if they have a contract out in each other like that's their safe haven. They can hold up hole up in there and like you cannot spill blood or you're excommunicated from like the the um the guild uh, but dude it's a fucking killer movie hmm. and it's opened up for a third there's going to be a trilogy and i cannot fucking wait interesting and i was just gonna rent it and i'm like it's 5.99 to rent it it's 14.99 to own it and i'm like i really like the first john wick how much is that 14.99 yeah. oh okay on itunes oh there's a two-pack 19.99 Ching <laughs> bought, so I, I did that. Um, I, I ended up buying Logan, which was on sale for fifteen bucks, but it also has Logan Noir, which basically they took the movie and made it in black and white. They oh. took all the color out of it and turned it into a black and white film, which makes it awesome. It's like the Easter egg of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, really? They do it in uh, like black and white up until like, kind of like. Kind of like Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, up until like the when he comes down the elevator shaft. Gotcha. And they, I'm sorry if I'm looking glazed over. I'm just exhausted. No, right no, no. Now. It's cool. <laughs> but they also did that for um, Mad Max Fury Road. Didn't they, see that either. Oh, that's a good movie too. Like I know it's a movie for dudes. I get it. And I don't think it's specifically for dudes because um, uh, what's her name? She's really hot. She's blonde. I'm drawing a fucking blank right now. She was in Monster. Charlize Theron. Yes, she's in it. And, uh, dude, she's a strong, hard-ass motherfucker in this movie. Hmm. Like, it is a fucking tight-ass movie. Like, seriously. It might be about, you know, a chase. Like, the movie is a whole, like, two-hour chase scene. Absolutely worth every minute of that chase scene. Maybe. Absolutely worth it. I'm sorry. Like, and I don't, you know me. You know I fall asleep when producer Jake talks about cars and all that bullshit. That's how I'm feeling right now. No offense, <laughs> like with these movies, and I'm not. It's not. No, no, no. I know. You. I know. But honestly, like Mad Max Fury Road, definitely worth. Like it's got like a really, really high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, critics reviews, everything. Speaking of which, you know what else got like a 98 percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes so far? Huh. Wonder Woman. Really? Yes. It's getting lauded uh, as the movie. I really want to <clears throat> see it when it comes out this weekend. I just, I can't. I have an exam on Monday. Uh, I can't. I wanted. That's why I asked what time you were working on Friday because I yeah, know I work at Yeah, unfortunately, like, yeah, like, I would have to. Uh, with this new job, I'm going to be shadowing on Friday. I get it, dude. And I can't do it during, like, unless I call in <coughs> sick. Yeah, but And there's no. no way. And, like, I cannot see it before the kids go to bed. There's just no way. So we'll have to, I might have to go see it after we pod oh, on Friday night and yeah, just go. I'll be studying again after that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so yeah, uh, but speaking of movies with extremely high Rotten Tomato scores, which again, we've spoken about like motherfucker Rotten Tomato and you know, whatever, but get out. Oh my God. I watched Dude. it this past weekend because I needed a, a brain break. I needed a, a break from studying and I needed time to not focus on, you know, the, the skeletal bones and all that shit. Um, holy crap. And the fact yeah. that Peel, Jordan Peel, yeah. that really fucked with my head at first. Like, I, I didn't see. So the premise of the movie really is this this guy has a girlfriend and it's really him, her taking him. It's meet the parents. Meet parents, right? And guess who's coming to dinner? Basically, and uh, the twists and turns that this take—you know, something's fucked up as soon as they get there, though. And even in the opening scene, too, where the guy gets kidnapped off the street. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, what is fucking going on here? Um, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But the twists that it Dude, takes, seriously, like the third, oh. the entire third act, I'm like, what the fuck yeah. is going on here? Are you yeah. serious? Really? Is this really happening? Is this what this is all led up to? And fucking Milton from Office Space. Yeah. Dude, what a crazy motherfucker in that movie, too. Dude. I just, I, Catherine Keener was creepy as shit. Dude, and like the whole, like, 
right at the, right as it was oh. going on, I, I texted Eli. Like, All right, dude, I just bought, I just bought it because yeah. it was it was nine bucks on iTunes. So I'm like, oh, I just, that's not bad. I'm like, All right, I just bought Get Out. I'm going to start watching it. Oh. Okay. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah, she starts like with using the her. They're like, there's a scene where she's sitting there, like, she's like stirring it, with stirring her spoon. a teacup, and like that was just creepy. Well, and then when she told him sink, and he's just like, no, 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 and then like all of a sudden that happens. That yeah, creeped the shit out of me though mm. too. But and it was just like, but there was humor in it too. I mean, it was a, it was. A, I wouldn't call it, was, it like, dark humor. I wouldn't call it a horror flick. It was definitely a thriller. Yes. Thank you. That's it, exactly what I thought. Too. It was definitely a thriller, but there was a lot of humor in it too. Like just the weird awkwardness of uh-huh. like, what's up, my man? Like the dad was trying to like, he's affect... going to talk to you about Obama the whole time and blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah. and like, what did I? What did? Because Jordan Peele was on talking with Chris Hardwick, uh-huh. and I guess the way that he approached Catherine Keener to the role was like. How do you how do you feel about playing an ultra liberal racist hell bent on craziness <laughs> or something to that effect? And I'm like, yeah, that, that's pretty much that's spot on. But like, even like, because I I didn't recognize Bradley Whitford at all. I I did though, but but he just creeped the shit out of me though too because they like bleached his hair, bleached his hair. He was like old man white, yeah. and he had the beard. Because if anybody like the only thing I know Bradley Whitford from is The West Wing. Well, he's also, um, his wife was the chick from um, um, Malcolm in the Middle. I'm pretty sure that that... that... Patri- not Patricia Heaton. No, whatever her fucking Jane Kashmirik yes. or whatever. That's yeah. his wife? I'm pretty sure. Really? I Cause I, so. I know that she she's from Chicago. Am I wrong about that? Seatown represent, yo. Is it? Is it Bradley Whitford? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I always confuse. I always think With Bradley Whitford. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think, too. My first name confusion. Yeah. Jink. Oh, I guess they used to be married. Uh, but they were. Yeah, he used to be married to her, but they were married for quite a lot of years. But interesting. Yeah. That's how I always like assimilate him because of her. But assimilate. You mean associate? Associate. Thank you. Assimilation you. means like I'm going to assimilate you into the bowl. I told you, dude, the brain It is just it is so late right now and I have to be up in five and a half hours. To yeah, that work. makes I got to be up in five and a half hours to yeah. take care of children. So I understand. But yeah, like, dude, that movie is so good. It's really good. I, I, I went into it with no expectations because I didn't like I keep hearing all these good things about it and I wasn't sure. And then it had me hooked, really, from like the opening scene, yeah, and just all that shit. And the creepy kid who plays the brother—I can't remember where he's from before, though. Um, but at first, like, I looked at him because he looked like a freckle-faced younger version of Heath Ledger. Yeah, and that's what he reminded me of. And I was just like, "Where is this little fucking creep from?" I know I've seen him before. I can't remember his name. I don't know. And the the girlfriend, the daughter, whatever you want to call her, she was creepy as shit too. I mean, the whole movie. Uh, his name is Caleb Landry Jones. Okay. I have seen him because he was in the X-Men First Class. Okay. He was in the very first First Class movie. He played Banshee. Uh, he was also in the, sush- in the uh, Social Network. That's why, that's why I... Okay. He was Fraternity Guy. But I vaguely remember him from that movie. He was also Lewis on Breaking Bad. That's why... Okay, that is a better... Because I'm like, I reckon... Yep. Okay, that's why. And he was on the Disney Channel show Victorious, which I don't think you've watched. Did you watch Friday Night Lights? Uh, no. Okay, he was in that. And then he was in a bunch of like weird kind of... Indie movies. Indie movies, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that was about it. Like, yeah. yeah. That movie, though, I, I, for anybody out there listening, watch it. I don't play fight with drunk people. Oh, uh, God. I... The whole thing from start to finish, really. I mean, like at the end, I felt it was a little bit ridiculous ish. Like, well, I mean, it was going to be, but you know, the, 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 it had to at that they point. They had to. They had to. But <clears throat> again, another one where the science is complete bullshit. Oh, total bullshit. And and that's what I thought in my head. But at the same time, you're like, this is fucking Lucy. <laughs> no, I didn't say that in my head. But I, I kept thinking, I'm like, this is total bogus bullshit. However. The suspension of disbelief is fine in it because you're like, all right, this is some like secret society type shit. Right. But right. like, like the weird auction scene. Oh my God. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Like, I, I didn't see that right coming. Away as soon. Well, I knew that something was up, but I didn't know which direction it was going to go. I'm like, this is weird. 
this is very weird. And then, like, you see the history of... Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say it. I don't right. want to... But you know where I'm getting at. Like, especially with all the web browsing. Oh, yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, and yeah. then the box that he finds yep. in the cupboard. Like, whoa, I knew what? I going that way, though, because just the way that they kept flashing in between the scene with him and her down at the water and then going back to the auction. And, like, I'm like... Yeah, like, I know we're kind of talking in circles here, but just, I, I don't want to say that it was predictable because it wasn't, but I understand. Well, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't an auction. It was, they were playing bingo. It was the bingo scene. It was a bingo scene, but it, 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 for all intents and purposes, yeah, it was totally. It was a bingo scene. Yeah. So, but yeah, dude, seriously, if you guys (laughs) get a chance, man, honestly, if, if it's still on, on, uh, on iTunes for nine bucks, download it. Seriously, yeah. buy it. Like I, it's I worth it on the demand, watch. Just because it was easier for me to. to yeah, do for that, sure, but. for sure. But yeah, it's absolutely worth the watch. It's yeah. so fucking it's twisted. Good, it's a good mind fuck. That's for sure. And apparently, Jordan Peele is uh, he's writing another one. That's good. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's set within the same universe. Interesting. But it is like, it's there. Like oh oh oh, I saw Split. It was the latest movie the with uh, that M Night Shyamalan Ding Dong wrote. Ah, uh, okay. Holy the fuck! <laughs> I when I can, I'll have to seek that out and watch it, dude. Too. Uh, yeah, like it is muy excelente. Like he is back, and it's not like oh, there's a twist. There's not a twist. There's no twist. No twist. Mm. But it's good. And it ties into one of his other movies as well. Okay. And I'm not going to spoil it. Don't. Because I don't want to be a douche. <laughs> but like, oh, holy the fuck. Okay. Um, James McAvoy is in it. He plays the main pro- antagonist. Okay. Um, let me tr- let me pull up McAvoy because I'm not sure you know where he's from. Um, he was a, he played a, a movie you wouldn't get. Um. <laughs> He played young Professor X in the X-Men First Class movies. Okay. He was also 